make sure that you know where you stand with numbers, whether you are active or passive, because it's super, super important for you to be able to say like, no, this is where I draw the line. Yes, you are comfortable with that, but I am not. And that's something you want to make sure. Hey everyone, Susie here from Adventurous Real Estate Investors. Today, I'm going to chat with you about the importance of debt financing in an apartment syndication and its role and kind of what it does for the entire journey. So when taking down an apartment, investors, sponsors like myself, raise equity through our investor network, who are the passive investors, and then we finance the majority. And so when you finance the rest, some people add the CapEx funds so that they can get a little less from their investors. And some people don't take that approach at all. And then they need more from their investors. So because the cost of debt is lower than the cost of equity, the majority of the financing does come through debt, whether that is through Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae, whether that is through, you know, like a private, private equity firm, it can totally range on who that money comes from, but you want a lot of it from debt because it is lower. So an example of that is that in a most recent syndication that Michael and I recently closed, our interest rate through Freddie was 4.71%. And so that is pretty low because compared to our investors where we are giving a preferred return of 7% and 10%, you can see how that's a big difference in the instance of the class A members that are getting 10%, that's more than double. And so that is why a large majority does come from that debt side. But with that, that person also has a lot of control. It's just part of this fun game. <laughs> but so usually I will raise at least 20% of the value of the asset with equity and finance, but no more than 80. Definitely don't try to go over 80 just for a variety of reasons. A lot of it is that um, when the economy changes, you want to make sure that you can constantly pay that debt service. And just so the higher that the loan to value is, the higher the risk, like, you leave little room for error and we just don't want that. And so it is a responsibility of myself also to the lender and to my investors to make sure that I can cover that monthly debt payment. Serious, that is the number one thing you always want to be able to cover because you never want to, I never want to lose my investors' money. Never, 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 never. And so that's why it's huge. So with long-term debt, Michael and I always go for long-term debt. So we try to get an amortization that is longer than the period of our business plan so that we know that we can execute everything that we need to and the loan isn't gonna come due immediately where we haven't, we're not done executing. So throughout that life of the business plan, we have to make the necessary improvements. We have to stabilize the property increase income, just make a better community. And we want to make sure that we have ample time to be able to do that. And the thing is, is that when you get that initial term sheet or when we get the initial term sheet from the lender with like, you know, three different options, we always ask for more just because we do know that we can negotiate and always asking for longer amortization is really, really huge for us. Um, it's just really important. I want to reiterate because we want to make sure that we can have our business plan be executed throughout the time that we have. We're borrowing that debt from them. We just don't want to lose any flexibility. We want to lower our risk if possible, because if we have to suddenly sell or refinance because our loan is coming due, um, we are then giving the buyers the upper hand and we don't want to be in that instant, right? We don't want to know that we have to sell just because it, the our debt service coming due. That's not something, a position that we ever want to be in. So that is just an opinion that I hold in the market that we're in right now. It's just something that I look for. <laughs> and so it's just super important that with your debt coverage ratio, you always want to ensure that the current net operating income of the asset sufficiently covers that debt service, like I said earlier. And you just want to make sure that it is covered. And then the additional cash flow that you think you're going to get from 
the property covers you know what the projected returns were covers the capex that you want to have covers any unforeseen circumstances you just want to make sure that you're covered so definitely look for that when you're looking at underwriting whether you want to be a passive or active investor that's something that you want to look for or ask about because the interest rate and the debt coverage that you receive could change up until the very end of the deal um there is a little bit of flexibility so just be aware of that right because with the acquisition that we just closed the whole time we thought that our interest rate was 4.81 and then i get the term sheet and it's 4.71 and i got a little more money than expected and i was like oh right so like it can change and you don't really know what it is until the very end in some instances and that's okay but you know that from the term sheet that the sponsors originally get like you can kind of tell how the asset is operating because of it because Operators aren't going to give you 80% leverage if they know that they you can't cover it or just for different circumstances that you might not want that much leverage. So definitely go in and ask the sponsor questions or ask seller questions about anything that you want when, when it has to come to that. Everyone should be open to answering any of those questions. And so the more easily that you can cover your debt service with your net operating income, the lower your risk of default, which is huge. Like I said, definitely don't want to lose anybody's money. That would be a big deal. So smart risk adverse investors look for assets that produce cash flow from day one. And that is definitely something we strive for because we want to make sure that you're getting money throughout the life of the deal because three years from now, five years from now, seven years from now, I have no idea what the economy is going to be like. And so I know that we all project what we want to be able to sell an asset yet. But if the economy is not in the place where we can sell during that time, at least I know that we were cash flowing throughout the life of the deal. And my investors have been receiving that cash flow the entire time. Um, and Michael and I chat about that in a different video, how the what the importance of cash flow is from day one. So make sure to check that out if you are interested in learning a little bit more. But so with that, it, I know I've talked about underwriting a lot, but this is really where the importance of conservative underwriting comes in. And just practicing that over and over and over and looking out for conservative underwriting and figuring out what that means to you is just a gift. Make sure that you know where you stand with numbers, whether you are active or passive, because it's super, super important for you to be able to say like, no, this is where I draw the line. Yes, you are comfortable with that, but I am not. And that's something you wanna make sure that you understand when you are looking at underwriting. And so just, you know, some food for thought, just because a lender is willing to lend the funds does not mean that you are always investing in a great deal. Um, today's commercial real estate market can be so unpredictable. I mean, we've experienced that now for the last couple of months. And so the best protection for risk mitigation is really seeing if a sponsorship team has secured long-term debt and if they haven't just ask why ask what their business plan is what the length of time is how they hope to achieve it right away because again some people's risk is different whether it's short term or long term and so just really look out for that and just make sure you have that high standard of conservative underwriting so that you know what to look out for when you are looking over all of the deals that you have it's just huge and you want to make sure that the opportunities that the sponsor is providing to you are great ones for you and your financial goals. So I hope you all have a great day. Happy investing. If you like this video, please make sure to smash that like button below and ring that bell so that you can receive more videos when they come out. So until next time, explore more adventure awaits. Woo!